quake split a tectonic plate in two, and geologists are shaken. On September 7, 2017, a magnitude 8.2 earthquake struck southern Mexico, killing dozens and injuring hundreds. While earthquakes are common enough in the region, this powerful event wasn't any run-of-the-mill tremor. That's because part of the roughly 37-mile-thick tectonic plate responsible for the quake completely split apart, as revealed by a new study in Nature Geoscience. This event took place in a matter of tens of seconds, and it coincided with a gargantuan release of energy. If you think of it as a huge slab of glass, this rupture made a big, gaping crack, says lead author Diego Melgar, an assistant professor of earthquake seismology at the University of Oregon. All indications are that it has broken through the entire width of the thing. No one really knows how they happen. This information gap matters, because huge populations from the western seaboard of the Americas to the eastern shores of Japan could be threatened by these enigmatic earthquakes. For one thing, the deep quakes can induce strong shaking over a wide area that can level plenty of multi-story buildings. One that took place beneath the Chilean town of Chiyan in 1939, for example, killed at least 30,000 people. And when they happen near an ocean coastline, their destructive potential could be magnified. My real worry over these kinds of events is that tsunami, Melgar says. Tectonic plates, also known as lithospheric slabs, are made up of the planet's crust and the hot but solid upper mantle. They constantly move around Earth's surface, either grinding side by side, crumpling up into one another and forming mountains, or descending under another plate in what is referred to as a subduction zone. Along these various plate boundaries, you get earthquakes when friction generates stress that's ultimately released. But quakes can also occur far from these plate boundaries, in the part of the slab that's been pushed through a subduction zone and into the lower mantle. Here's what will happen when Earth's tectonic plates grind to a halt. If you bend an eraser, you can see the top half being extended and stretched, whereas the bottom bit is squashed and compressed, Melgar notes. The same applies to these slabs. This bending can activate faults within the slab and trigger what are known as intraslab earthquakes. On occasion, some incredibly energetic ones happen on so-called normal faults, where the movement of a chunk of rock follows gravity's lead as it falls downward. Melgar points to the 1933 Sanriku earthquake in Japan, which came in at a magnitude 8.5, as a good example of one of these intraslob normal quakes. Another would be the magnitude 7.8 Tarapaca earthquake in northern Chile in 2005. Sometimes, as in southern Mexico, the rupture can cut right through a slab. The same is thought to have happened beneath Iran in 2013 during a magnitude 7.7 .7 tremor. Whether they feature this type of dramatic severance or not, these powerful quakes are inherently mysterious. Seismic surveys normally used to visualize tectonic movements can't penetrate to such depths. The mapping of oceanic slabs is also in its infancy, and there's not much high-resolution historical data to go on. That means geoscientists are currently scrambling for ways to best explain what's going on.